The Center of Excellence Starter Kit keeps getting better. If your organization has bought additional Dataverse capacity, how do you make sure that it gets used by the right division and not eaten up by those folks in HR? The COE's new Environment Capacity Management answers this question, and Manuel is gonna show it today on PowerCAD Live. Welcome to PowerCat Live. My name is Phil Thomas of the PowerCat team, and I'm back once again with fellow PowerCat Manuela and her new intern. Who have you got with you, Manuela? <laughs> yeah, I know it's called the cat team, but I've got my dog with me. This is Logan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, wait a second. How can we be the cats and you have your dog with you? Hi, Logan. Welcome to PowerCat Live, Logan. He's excited about being famous. <laughs> It's it, Well, I mean, it's cat fame, though, so I don't know what Logan is going to do with that. Right? <laughs> so, Manuela, you've been on PowerCat Live, I think, more than anybody else because you've already always delivering something new. What is the newest part of the COE, the environment capacity management? Um, yes, yeah, so at the moment, um, from a public from perspective, capacity is managed at a tenant level, but we found that many of our customers would want to manage it at a much more granular level, um, assign kind of approved capacity to a set of environments um, mm -hmm. and cross-charge that capacity to, um, to business units, for example, but also get alerting when certain um, environments get over their approved capacity. Um, so that's not available in the public from admin center. So we've kind of augmented what's available there um, with the series starter kit and build a solution on top there. And can you show us how it works? Um, yeah, of course, yeah. Um, so in the series starter kit, you've got this public from admin view that shows you a list of all the environments that are um, available in the tenant. Um, yeah, if you select one of the environments there, you can see um, the capacity um, of that environment. You can see what's um, the actual consumption of that environment, and you can set an approved threshold. So for example, um, nice. this environment um, consumes currently about one gigabyte of, of capacity. So I can see I'm approving them to use um, 2.5 gigabyte um, once they get close to that approved capacity, they can, um, you, you would get an alert um, and can take an appropriate action, um, either clean up or, you know, assign, um, assign more capacity to that environment. Um, and additional to that, you can assign a business area um, to that environment so you can sort of, um, it serves the purpose of grouping environments together. So if your HR department has a dev test and prod environment, um, you might want to group them and report on that together um, so you can assign um, a business area from here or obviously configure a, a, a new one um, for um, for your purposes. And what types of capacity like AI Builder or whatever can I manage in this? Um, so at the moment it's limited to storage capacity, so database, mm -hmm. um, file and log capacity. Got it. So then all this data is used for alerts and reports like you described. What do those look like? Um, yeah, of course. So obviously once you've configured that, you will receive um, capacity alerts. Um, so they will show you environments that are either over their approved capacity or close to it, like 80% close to it, um, for any of the capacities that you've configured. Um, it's important to note that this is a soft threshold. Um, so it's used for alerting only. Um, if the environment goes over that approved capacity, they can still um, use everything in that environment and they can continue to consume capacity. So it's nothing that's enforced in the product. It's really just um, used for alerting and reporting. But at um, least it gives you some way of being proactive yeah, about it. Yes. Yeah, at least you know. Um, yeah. And then from a um, reporting um, perspective, there's the um, in the Power BI dashboard, there's a page that shows you the capacity and you can see kind of your top um, offenders um, in a way. So your environments that consume the most um, capacity and you might want to, um, in this case, reach out to Johnny um, and ask him to clean up that environment, ask if it's possible to clean up the environment. Yeah, what is he doing in there anyways? Yeah. Storing a lot of files. Um, <laughs> sh sh surely there's a better way to do that than um, using Dataverse capacity. <laughs> so you mentioned that this, uh, this augments what's in PPAC. Everything at PPAC then is at a higher level? Um, yeah, it's at a tenant level. So in PPAC, you can still see at an environment level what... Um, and even at a kind of table level, what capacity is being consumed, but you can't set those um, thresholds um, and you can't get alerting on um, environment level. Um, if your entire tenant goes over capacity or close to capacity, the Power Platform admin receives an alert um, similar to the one that, that we sent for the mm -hmm. environment level, but it is really at a, at a tenant level. And from that email, you might not immediately kind of know what's causing um what's causing you to be over or close to your um, tenant capacity. 
And as you pointed out, right, at a tenant level, our large customers can't really do cross-charges within divisions. So talk a little bit more about how, how people are using it for cross-charging. Um, yeah, so using the capability that I showed earlier of assigning a business area to environments, um, customers kind of group environments together um, using that capability and then also assign an, um, perhaps a business area owner um, using that um, additional email address here. And then they can gather reporting specific to that business area um, and also do cross charging um, at that level. So um, obviously capacity is purchased also at an um, environment level, but you purchase it by the gigabyte, I guess, um, and you can yeah. then, um, as a tenant admin, you purchase it, but you know exactly how much that um, set of environments that the HR department, for example, is using, and you can um, ask them to um, pay for that. And this satisfies a lot of needs that I've seen from my customers. Where do you go next? What do you have planned for this? Um, yeah, so I think we've kind of heard a lot of customer feedback on this. I think uh, really for us, the next step is to, to listen further to customers on, on what requirements they have. Um, for this feature. Um, so if you have any ideas, please go to our GitHub repo um, and raise a feature ask um, there and, and we'll definitely take that into consideration as we do our planning. And that GitHub repo link and all the information on how to get this installed are down in the description. Manuela, thanks again for showing us, uh, showing the COE environment capacity management tool. Thanks for having me. Thanks for watching everyone. Mm -hmm.